Let's analyze a simple series circuit using Ohm's law and the power formula. Here we have a power supply providing voltage to a series circuit consisting of two resistive loads or resistors R1 and R2 each having a resistance value of 3 ohms. The power supply is providing 12 volts power supply is like a battery and here is the schematic diagram so we use a battery symbol to represent the power supply and we have the two resistor symbols representing the two resistors R1 and R2 each having a value of 3 ohms first let us calculate the total resistance of this circuit any series circuit the resistances add up the total resistance, therefore, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus Rn, or how many ever resistors we have. Rn means the nth resistor. So in this case, we just have R1 and R2. So the total resistance of our circuit would be expressed as R1 plus R2. And therefore we can simply add up the two resistor values for our circuit and our, our two resistor values are 3 ohms for each of the two resistors so it's simply 3 ohms plus 3 ohms gives us a total resistance of 6 ohms next we need to find the current in the circuit now the formula from for for uh, current according to Ohm's law and we can use our memory aid here this this is the Ohm's law formula that gives the three formulas one for voltage current and resistance we want to use the one for current so we cover up I and that gives us V divided by R so the basic formula for current equals voltage divided by resistance now we can write that as I equals E divided by R. That would be, or V divided by R. Remember E and V are the same thing. People use sometimes E for voltage, sometimes V. Here we're using V. So the basic formula is v voltage divided by resistance. So now let's, uh, let's apply that to find the total current. So if we're talking about total current, then what uh, voltage are we talking about and what resistance are we talking about well we're talking about the voltage of the power supply we call that voltage total and the resistance of everything or resistance total is what is going to be used in this formula because it is both resistors together or all of the resistors together that affect the current the remember the electricity acts like water in a pipe if you have a water a pipe filled up with water and water is flowing into one end of the pipe then the same amount of water will be coming outside the will be coming out the other end of the pipe same thing here for every bit of charge we put into the wire the same amount will be coming out so the flow rate is the same everywhere in the wire we can say then that the current is the same everywhere in the wire by the way that can be written as this it can be written as current the total current or the current of the battery is equal to the current of the, through resistor 1 which is equal to the current through resistor 2 which would be equal to how many ever would be equal to re current through any resistor in the series circuit so this is all we only have two here in this case I'm gonna make a little more room here for my whiteboard and so if we find the current in any part of the circuit we found the current in every part of the circuit that means then that if we find current total we'd also find the current for R1 and the current for R2 so let's find the current total well the current total would be equal to the voltage of the battery divided by the resistance of um, the total circuit the total circuit is a total resistance of 6 ohms so we would divide 12 volts by 6 ohms that gives us uh, 12 tw 2 amperes 
for IT. I'm going to put it in the right place there. 12 volts divided by 6 ohms is 2 amperes. Now this is a series circuit, so we don't really need to recalculate the currents for the individual resistors. Uh, in fact, we don't have enough information to do so even if we wanted to at this point because we would need to know the voltages across each individual resistance and we don't know that. So, but we do know this is a series circuit and we know that in a series circuit the, the currents are the same, so we don't really have to recalculate those. Now that brings us to the voltages of the individual uh, components. I'm going to make a little room here and I am going to uh, illustrate what I mean about the voltages of the individual components or the uh, in this case the uh, resistors. So what, what I can do is use a, a, a meter voltmeter symbol here. This is a voltmeter and I am going to connect up this voltmeter to resistor 1. And So this is what I mean by the voltage across resistor 1. I'm going to put the red lead on the more positive end of resistor 1 and I'm going to put the black lead or the negative lead on the more negative end of resistor 1. And then I'm also going to hook up another uh, voltmeter with uh, its to R2. So I'm going to connect a wire from the positive side of the voltmeter to the more positive end of R2 and the black wire to the more negative end of R2. These would be two voltmeters and they would both display a voltage. You might think that they would be showing 12 volts, but no, they do not. That's because there's going to be a voltage drop. It's like in water, when water flows through a pipe with an obstruction, it causes a pressure drop. There's going to be a voltage drop or a difference, and the voltmeter measures that difference of potential or voltage drop and we would find that there would be a, no, a number on these voltmeters which is not 12 volts. So let's calculate that. Well first of all the uh, general formula for uh, voltage, let's uh, remember that formula and uh, so we're not talking about current anymore now, we're talking about uh, voltage. So what is the general formula for voltage in Ohm's Law? Again we'll use our memory aid and our memory aid is right here and the formula for voltage would cover up voltage and that gives us I times R V voltage equals I times R uh, so that is our general formula V equals I times R put that here so remember what that's the general formula but we want to find the voltage of R1, so which current will we be talking about and what resistance will we be talking about? Well, we'd be talking about the current of R1 and the resistance of R1. So that would be IR1 times R1. So we'd write that like this. There we go there. And what is the value of that? Well, IR1, IR1, or the current through R1, is 2 amperes. And the resistance of R1 is 3 ohms, so that's 6 volts. Now, the same formula would apply to volt, the voltage of resistor 2, but that would be the current of resistor 2 times the resistance of resistor 2. But there, but the current through resistor 2 is the same as through the current of R1, resistor 1, because it's a series circuit. So we, uh, we can use that same current. And so it's still 2 ohms, I mean 2 amperes, multiplied by the resistance of resistor 2, which just happens to be the same in this case. So that also is 3 ohms. So 2 amps times 3 ohms gives us 6 volts. So both of these would read 6 volts. So if we were to measure the uh, voltage of cross R1, it's going to be 6 volts. And if we measure the uh, voltage across resistor 2, it's also going to be 6 volts. So we calculated our voltages. Now the last thing to do is to calculate our power. The general formula for power, if we use our memory aid, we have here a uh, formula 
for power and a little memory aid to remember it. This is the memory aid for po the power formulas. There's three formulas. There's one that gives you power if you know the current and the voltage. There's one that gives you current if you know the power and the vo and the voltage. And there's one that gives you voltage if you know the power and the current. Well, we want the one that gives us power. That's the one we want. It's cover up P, you get I times E. That's the, the formula for power. And uh, that can be expressed as P equals I times E. So that would be expressed like this in general. This is a general formula for power. And we want to find the uh, power of R1, power of R2, and power total. Now I'm going to take it a little out of order here and I'm going to first find the power of R1. The power of R1 would be according to this formula current through R1 times the voltage of R1. Now that can be written as IR1 times ER1. That would be like this. Power equals IR1 times ER1. And that would be then the Whoops, let's put that in the right place. There we go. Power of R1 equals IR1 times ER1. And the, uh, value, the value of the current through R1 would be 2 amperes, and the voltage would be 6 volts, so that gives us 12 watts. And now the same thing goes for... Um, resistor number two, the power of resistor number two, it would be the current flowing through resistor number two, which is uh, the same as for resistor one because this is a series circuit, but uh, and therefore the calculations would be the same as well. That would be the same here. It would be two amps times six volts because it just so happens that the voltage is the same as well. So we get the same value, we get 12 watts. Now there's two ways we could calculate the total power and that would be, one way would be just simply add these two powers together and we get uh, 24 watts. So we, we could say that the power uh, total would be the sum of the individual powers. In fact, uh, that is one of the characteristics of a, of a series circuit but it, it actually is a true of any circuit. It can be parallel circuit, series parallel, whatever. It's the fact that the total power is the sum of the individual powers. So we could simply add up those two powers or we could calculate it as well. We could use the calculations that we did before and that would be would be this. It would be that the total current multiplied by the total voltage, in other words the current through the power supply times the voltage of the power supply would give us a total power of 24 watts. And notice that 12 plus 12 is equal 24. So that checks out. So there we have now calculated all of the different uh, values that we could want and we could then f you know, fill in our little table here if we wanted to with all those different values for um, for the resistance, the current, the voltages, and the powers of all parts of our circuit. In the next part, I'm going to do another circuit like this, but with uh, different values and uh, a little bit more complicated. So watch the next part, and I'll demonstrate the same techniques again. It's sometimes good to watch it in different ways, and we'll see a little different situation.